Okay, we're going to look at the third and final way to solve systems of linear equations. This is my personal favorite. It's the second half of 3-2. And we're going to look at solving systems by elimination. Okay, this is far more algebraic than the way we started when we were looking at graphing. So if you're a bigger fan of algebra, getting variables by themselves, I think you'll like this method a whole lot more than some of the other ones. Um, but we'll go from there. So here's the steps to solving systems by elimination. First thing you want to do is you want to multiply one or both of your equations to get a common coefficient. What I mean by that is you want one of the letters in each of the equations to have either the same coefficient exactly or have opposites of each other like 6 and 6, negative 3, positive 3. And you might ask yourself, well, why is that necessary? Well, it's where the elimination comes in. When you get one variable that has the same or equal and opposite coefficients, the next step is you can add or subtract both equations together to eliminate, hence the name, one variable. And we'll look at some examples of that shortly. It seems a little weird. You've never really probably added or subtracted equations before, but you can do that. Remember, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you can do to the other, including add the left sides of two equations together and add the right sides of two equations together to get one whole equation. Once you do eliminate that variable, all that's left is solve for the remaining variable. And then, of course, that gets you one of the two answers to the system, and then you have to plug back in to get the other one like we've been doing with the other methods. Okay, so we'll look at one example, a really easy one. 2x plus 4y equals negative 10, and negative 4x minus y equals 0. Now, what makes this easy is you can actually skip the first step. When you always get a system and you want to use the elimination method, you ask yourself, self, is one of these variables have the same number as its coefficient or opposites as its coefficient? And if you look here, in this system, we've got plus 4y and minus 4y. In that case, the y's are opposite, so we're going to add the two equations together. And we get 2x equals negative 10. Let me stop this tape for a second here and pause to give you a chance to take a look at what happened. So we're adding the left sides and the right sides together. So we get 2x plus negative 4x is minus 2x. And then when we add the y's, we get 4y plus negative 4y, which is 0y's. They're gone. We have, as the name would suggest, eliminated the y's. And then on the right side, we have negative 10 plus 0. So this whole thing adds together to just get you negative 2x equals negative 10 which is a very easy equation. So we'll solve for x. We divide both sides by negative 2. x is 5. But we got to figure out the y value. So like I started here, we go into the one of the equations. I'm going to use the first equation. Plug in 5 for x and solve. And we get that 4x equals negative 20 when you combine like terms and move the 10 over to the right side. y is then negative 5. So the ordered pair for this system is 5, negative 5. Now, in this second step down here, if you wanted to use the second equation and do negative 4 times 5 minus 4y equals 0, knock your socks off. You could do that. I just like to use the first equation for some reason when I do these, but it doesn't matter which one because remember, as we've seen, both with the other methods and with the graph, you're always going to get the same solution regardless of which equation you use. So it doesn't matter which one you plug in to get the other variable. All right, let's take a look at the second equation on your sheet, the second problem in your notes. 15x plus 10y equals negative 25, and negative 5x minus 5y equals 5. Now, if you look here, this one's a little different. None of the variables line up to have the same coefficient yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a variable that we want to eliminate. Usually it's one whose coefficients that are given in the problem are multiples of each other. So if you look here, negative 5 and 15 are kind of related. They're each multiples of 5. So what I can do if I want to eliminate that x is I can multiply both equations, well not both equations, excuse me, both variables in the second equation 
by 3 and rewrite this system as, ne as 15x plus 10y equals negative 25. And now negative 15x minus 15y equals 15. Be careful. The 3 distributes to every, use the pen, every term in that second equation. Now, we can do what we just did in the first problem. We have equal and opposite values for our x coefficients. So we'll add both equations. 15 plus negative 15 is now 0x, so the x's wave goodbye and disappear from the whole problem. And we're just left with negative 5y equals negative 10. Simple one-step equation, divide through by negative 5. y will now equal 2. Now I go back into that first equation, replace my y with 2, and I get 15x plus 10 times 2 equals negative 25. And I can solve for x. 15x plus 20 equals negative 25. Subtract 20 from both sides. 15x equals negative 45. Divide through by 15. x is negative 3. So my ordered pair for that solution is negative 3 comma 2. Let's try one more. This is as hard as it's going to get. But I think with the elimination method, even the hard problems are a little bit more straightforward than if you graphed or you use substitution. And here's what I mean by a hard problem. 9y plus 11x equals negative 29. And negative 33y minus 45 equals negative 21x. Oof, this is ugly. Things don't line up. You've got variables on other sides of equations, like in that second pro or that second line. That's okay. First thing I want to do is I want to get my work organized. And what I mean by that is I want to rewrite these two equations so that the x's line up with each other, the y's line up with each other, and the constants line up with each other. And here's how I do that. The first equation becomes 11x plus 9y equals negative 29. The second equation lines up to become positive 21x, because I move it over to the left, minus 33y equals positive 45, because I move that negative 45 over to the right. Now if we look, the numbers don't match. We have 11 and 21 for the x, positive 9 and negative 33 for the y. So we can't add or subtract yet. In fact, the pairs of numbers don't even relate to each other in terms of multiples. You can't multiply one of the numbers by a number to get the other one like we did with the 5 and the 15 earlier. So here's what we have to actually do. Pick the variable you want to eliminate. I'm going to eliminate the x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of crisscross. I'm going to multiply the first equation by the coefficient of x in the second equation, so in that case 21, and then I'm going to multiply the second equation by the coefficient of x from the first, so in this case it's 11. Now notice I'm not going to write all this down a second way, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to eliminate the y first, you could do the exact same thing, except you'd have to multiply that top equation by 33 and the bottom equation by 9. Okay? It doesn't matter. That's what's kind of cool about solving systems. Just like with substitution, it really didn't matter which variable you solved for first. Some were easier than others. Same thing with elimination. Some variables are going to be easier to eliminate than others depending on how the problem is worded, but it really doesn't matter which one you eliminate first. Anyway, back to my work here. So we'll distribute the 21 into the first equation. We get 231x plus 189y equals negative 609. Now I'm going to distribute the 11 in, and I get 231x minus 363y equals 495. Okay, again, be careful. You're going to multiply every coefficient in each equation by that same number that's on the outside of the parentheses. Now this time, and let me go back a couple steps here so you see what's happening. This time, the 231s are the same number, but they're also the same sign. So instead of adding the two equations to cancel out the x terms, now we're going to subtract them because 231 minus 231 is 0. Now the next thing you have to be a little bit careful about, we're doing 189 minus negative 363. So if you wanted to, actually, you could change this to a plus sign. Oh, let me use the pen 
and then make each of the second equations opposite signs so you don't lose track of your integers. So now this becomes 189 plus 363, which is 552y, and then negative 609 plus negative 495 is negative 1104. Now we solve for y by dividing both sides by 552, and we get y is negative 2. Let me go back, make sure you have all that set in there. Okay. Now we're going to pick one of the two equations, plug in negative 2 for y, and solve for x. I'm going to use the first equation. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 for y. I get now negative 18 plus 11x is negative 29. Add 18 to both sides, 11x is negative 11, so x is negative 1. So as an ordered pair, we have the solution negative 1, negative 2. Okay? I know that third one was a little bit complicated, but that is as hard as it's going to get. But in practice, I think you'll like the elimination method a whole lot more than some of the other methods that we use. Um, have a go at some of the practice problems, and I will see you in class tomorrow.